I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about what if your ex blocked you? <gasps> uh -oh. It's a horrible feeling. It is. And it's kind of always shocking and it hurts. Cause you're just like, I can't believe they did that. Now, if you've badgered them, <laughs> harassed them, done something mm -hmm. that pushes them, then you shouldn't be surprised. But sometimes, you guys just break up for whatever reason and they block you and that's when it's shocking. Like, mm -hmm. like I can't believe they actually did this. So we're going to be talking about what to do if somebody blocks you because when you're in this situation, it's really overwhelming, it's scary, it's confusing, mm -hmm. and it provokes a lot of anxiety in you. Unfortunately, that anxiety often makes us do a lot of irrational, emotional, impulsive decisions. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about these things because I know what it feels like to be blocked. It's just, it's like gut-wrenching in mm -hmm. your soul. Mm -hmm. The minute it happens, it's just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. Like, and you're just immediately like circling and replaying things over your yeah. mind of what happened why did they do this mm -hmm. and it's very painful and it feels like that bond is just severed that's it it's done you'll never hear from them again they must really mean it and you just kind of feel like it's over yeah you feel like you're being pushed out of their life you feel silenced by them and it can be really painful to think that your ex doesn't want to hear from you at all, that they have put some type of concrete parameter there to say, no, I, I don't want to even see your name pop up on my phone. That can be very, very painful. Mm -hmm. And this disconnection, it does cause separation anxiety. Mm -hmm. You know, our bodies have been used to some sort of routine with our ex. Our brains have identified them as a safe person, somebody that we can trust, that we open up to, that we're vulnerable with, that we are consistently communicating with. And so for that to suddenly stop, it causes our bodies to react. And all of this is normal. I know we talked about some of that anxiety that we experience, some of those symptoms that our thoughts start to spiral. What could I have possibly done to make them feel unsafe or to cause them to block me? Was it something I said? Are they trying to delete me out of their life? So our attachment to others is very, very powerful. and. On our end, it causes this type of primal panic that we talk about quite often on our channel. This fear that this person has left us, that they have abandoned us, and that they are no longer a part of our circle. Absolutely. It's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And it can also make you feel helpless. Like you've been silenced, like I mentioned. Like there's not much more you can do once you're blocked. There's no means of communicating with them. And that can be really tough to have that, that powerless type of feeling. Yeah. And when you're in it, you want to do something. Mm -hmm. I've got to do something to connect with them. You just feel this incredibly overwhelming feeling to just do whatever you have to do to get in front of them, to talk to them. I have to talk to them. But it often makes things worse. So let's start off by just saying, if you've been blocked, it's normal. It happens all, all the time, it's common, but guess what? People get unblocked all the time. And sometimes they'll just unblock you for a couple days and then they reblock you. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what happened? I didn't even say anything, I didn't even do anything. <laughs> well, it's hard to know what's going on with them at that time. But you may see that they've blocked your friends, your family, they'll unfriend, family, friends, anybody associated with mm -hmm. you. And it's really triggering and overwhelming for both them and for you. And 
you got to manage yourself in this situation. Mm -hmm. And for some of you, this block can happen suddenly or out of nowhere. Maybe it has been some months since you even talked to your ex. Maybe you haven't been harassing them or texting them. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't even interact with social media that much and you don't really post much and you're thinking, what the heck? Why, why is it necessary to block me if I'm not even interacting with you or your content or your page? <laughs> yeah. But you have to remember exes have their own process. Whatever is triggering to them is probably going to be very different than what's triggering for you. They're going through their own emotions, grief, maybe anger in some cases, frustration, depression in some cases. And so sometimes their behavior can be nonsensical, not really make sense to you, but to them, they have some sort of reason. It gives them that feeling of distance. Mm -hmm. um, it, it makes them feel like they have that space they could very easily be confused themselves. Hmm. And so that's why their behavior is confusing to you because they're confused themselves. Right. So, you know, when you're in this situation, a lot of times you're going to do things like, I don't know, texting them to see if you're blocked. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't try and get around the block. That is huge yeah and i know on some social medias on some messaging apps the only way to find out if you're blocked is to message them i know whatsapp might be one of those mm -hmm. um or like their icon doesn't show up or whatever it is mm -hmm. don't do that if you don't know if you're blocked and the only way of finding out is by messaging them calling them etc it's better to not find out at all yeah just leave it be, mm -hmm. okay? Because if you're not blocked and it goes through, now you've just broken no contact. <laughs> you're texting them, am I blocked? <laughs> am I blocked? Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, you are now. <laughs> Click. Yeah. Um, sometimes people use email or other anything, mm -hmm. any kind of way they can do it. A gaming profile. I've heard like running apps, hiking <laughs> apps, oh you name it, I've heard it. Um, the, all kinds the most of... interesting one I heard was, I guess this person had like their temperature in their house that they lived together in on the app. Mm -hmm. So he would like check to see, you know, when the temperature was changed in the home. I mean, that's how desperate we get to feel connected to yeah, that person. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of endearing. Like you could tell when she's warm or when I'm she's cold. cold. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was kind of endearing. He's but... like, yeah, you are cold. <laughs> He's like turning it down on the app. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, you know, we do try to feel connected by any means possible. So don't try to bypass the block is what we're saying. Yep. And don't try and create the fake account. <laughs> I'm just imagining <laughs> someone's like thermometer in their house saying, I miss you. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> I put it at 69 to remind her of me. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, or using Alexa, you know, to send messages, you know. Well, I've heard people get caught on Alexa. Oh my I've had people like catch, catch people at somebody's house with the Alexa recordings. I didn't know that Alexa records your voice oh, yeah. whenever um, you say something to it. And so I had a guy catch another guy at a girl's house oh my gosh. through that. Guys, just be careful with that you're stuff. Gonna, you're probably going to get caught. And you yeah. create a fake account, they're probably going to know it's you. Mm -hmm. At least they're going to be suspecting that it's you. <laughs> yeah. So don't do it. Uh, you want to be really careful because you don't want to do anything to make it worse. And you certainly don't want to do anything that's going to escalate and wind up with the police involved. Mm -hmm. Go, I mean, going into people's homes. Oh, we've yeah. seen it. Mm -hmm. um, because now it's like we have ring bells and all kinds of garage door things you can tell with the code with people yeah. entering the code yeah all kinds of things you can get caught now yeah just be careful and you know we don't want any of you to be in any legal trouble with your ex and we cannot emphasize enough please do not harass them please do not try to bypass this block okay <laughs> now i know many of you are thinking well why you know what what are the reasons for my ex to block me i don't think that they had any reason Think about it. One of the reasons might be that they don't want you to see their posts. And I know that this is maybe one of the reasons that is a little bit more difficult to digest, mm -hmm. but they might be trying to shield you from whatever they're doing too. That's true. So with this in mind, you know, don't try to go through family members or friends to try to see their profile if, if yours is the only one that's blocked. Mm -hmm. You know, normally family and friends, even if they are willing, 
Um, you're adding a third person to the mix. If your ex finds out, it can irritate them and it's just not healthy for you either. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking of like all the different scenarios we've heard with blocking and all mm -hmm. kinds of things that people try and do uh, to get around it that just winds up escalating real quick and angering your ex and it just makes them less likely to want to fix things with you, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Involving third parties can be a dangerous game. Even if they are the person that's closer to you, let's say it's a mutual friend, you know, if word does get back to them, which the truth has its way of coming out, mm -hmm. it can really backfire on you. Yep. So it might also be a case of harassment where you have been bombarding them with texts, or you have been overwhelming them, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes, like I mentioned before, your ex just has this feeling that they need to create some sort of distance. Some of you in more chaotic situations are probably thinking, oh, they're doing this to provoke me, I know it. We don't like to assume that your ex has any type of bad intentions or you know, has ulterior motives with this block, but think about it. Even if they did, would you engage in that type of behavior? You know, we would just say disengage, even if that's the case. You have thoughts? I do. <laughs> because on my Instagram, I did a poll some months ago about, I asked people if they had ever deliberately blocked an ex to, to, to make them reach out. Mm -hmm. And many of the people had admitted that they had. Wow. I think it was like, probably like 60% or so. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I put that poll in my stories. I'd have to go back and look. You could check my stories and see if it's in there. Sometimes I put my polls in there. But I remember being surprised how many people had said, yep, I deliberately wow. blocked them to try and provoke them to see if they'd reach out. But it's not, you want them to be mature about it, yeah. not doing stuff like that. Yeah, and it's not a reason to bypass that block, okay? You don't want to engage in that type of honestly immature behavior mm -hmm. you know, when people are not being direct about what they want and what they need um, and not saying what they what they feel and and want absolutely another thing that plays into this is also attachment styles and so somebody with a more avoidant attachment style will do just that they will avoid and sometimes that means blocking you removing you from their life by all means possible and i know that is very hurtful but like we talk about all the time, attachment is very powerful and they can try to avoid, they can try to compartmentalize and suppress, but things have their way of coming up, especially grief um, and attachment. That's right. And one thing that I want to touch upon that we kind of brought up earlier is what they're doing. Now, sometimes your ex doesn't want you to see what they're doing because they don't want to hurt you. They feel guilty. They, they know that it would hurt you and they, they're not that kind of person that wants to hurt you. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they do it for selfish reasons. Sometimes an ex will block you so you don't see them dating somebody new because they know if it doesn't work out with this new person mm. that you wouldn't date them after they've dated somebody new. Oh God. So I've seen that before too. So it can get confusing and complicated about why people are blocking and what their agendas are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just try to be an adult as much as possible. Try to be as mature as possible about these situations. I know that people can get riled up by social media, by what, what people post, by how people are blocked or unblocked. And just try to be as mature as possible. Yeah, don't, don't let them set you off. Yeah, yeah. Many people will also think, well, should I block my ex back? Should I let them know that I also can block them and I have that feature on my phone too. As soon as they unblock me, I'm blocking them. <laughs> <laughs> we don't suggest this, obviously for the reasons that we just mentioned, you know, we don't want to succumb to blocking to make a point or to indirectly uh, get to them or anything like that. If it is repair that you're looking for with this relationship, we suggest leaving that door open. Um, exes go through their own process of grief, ups and downs, moments where they are reconsidering things and then moments where they're angry, bitter, still processing. So keep that in mind. You want to give them that opportunity to reach out if they wanted. Yeah, exactly. That's really what we're wanting is for them to reach out when they want to talk to you and then you try and act like an adult to repair things. Mm -hmm.
Your ex is probably doing confusing behavior because they're probably confused themselves. They're going through a lot of different emotions too. Some days they probably miss you. Some days they're probably angry at you. Some days they're going through all kinds of things. And even they don't know what to say or what to do. Um, so they can be irrational and anxious and impulsive themselves. But we need you to act like the adult because all we can control is ourselves and all you can control is yourselves. And if you're trying to help a healthy relationship with somebody, acting like an adult and acting mature is the best way you can go about it. And if it doesn't work out, at least you know, I did my best, even though they tried to trigger me, even though they may be, have been impulsive or lashed out or done hurtful, mean things or said things or you know, did things to provoke me, I stayed calm because at the end of the day, you're going to feel good about how you handled it and they'll look back and think, well, I was being petty and immature and they still didn't act immature when I did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as you're going through this, remember to rely on your support system. It sucks to be blocked. It sucks to feel pushed out of somebody, somebody's life, somebody that you cared about. Yeah. So make sure that you are surrounding yourself by people that you do love and that love and care about you. And remember to respect your ex's need for space, even when it doesn't feel good, even when you don't like it. Um, I think ultimately that's going to show them confidence. It's going to show them that you can handle it. And remember not to take this personally. Your ex is going through their own process. That's right. And just to reiterate one last time, <laughs> don't try to get around the block. Don't do it. Just let it be for now. Be okay with it. That's the most confident thing that you could do. Okay? Now, if you want to get our help personally, you could do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you're ready to talk. Just click on her name on the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.